So one word that comes to mind for a lot of people when you're describing the pandemic is just flat out exhausting, right? And that feeling can manifest itself in a number of places, including at the workplace. Yeah, and one field that has really never been immune to burnout is healthcare, and COVID-19 has only made that problem more significant state and nationwide. I caught up with people from two of Maine's largest healthcare networks to find out where morale stands right now as the COVID-19 case count continues to grow. It's been crazy. It's been a roller coaster of a year. It's been exciting. Maine Medical Center nurse Jean Galnick has experienced a range of emotions since taking on her role in 2019, six months before the pandemic began. She says the past year and a half hasn't been easy. The burnout experienced a little bit by, by me, but by other nurses on my floor is really just high, uh, high census at the hospital. Um, lack of nursing staff that on top of challenges outside of work. You know, I have young kids. I have well, I have aging parents. I also I lost a parent during COVID. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot of pressures besides just my job every day. Meg Dion, also a nurse yeah, at Maine Medical great. Center, works um, in the emergency department. It's been, it's been a long 17 months, long enough to ask. Have you ever had any, any moments where you thought maybe I need to leave the profession? That's a really good question. I'm not leaving anytime soon, but it's something I think about a lot. In some ways, perhaps it's not surprising. A study published by journal eClinical Medicine found about 49% of almost 21,000 healthcare workers from 42 organizations nationwide experienced burnout between May and October of 2020. It's understood that when individuals are burnt out, one of the first things they look to do is either cut back their time or move on to something else. A concerning prospect in light of the Delta variant as the number of COVID-19 cases in our state continues to rise. There is some sign of frustration on people's behalf. Uh, you know, we, we hope that we would be through this by now. It's a journey that isn't over yet as resilient employees try their best to carry on. I'm amazed every single day about how our staff continue to go about their business, um, continue to care for our patients and our communities. It feels like we are in kind of the middle miles of a marathon and we just have to buckle down and keep going. Such an important topic to be talking about right now as we are still in the middle of this, as they all said. And I know you talked to a lot of people here. One of the most important parts of dealing with this is recognizing that you're even having burnout in the first place, right? Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do too when it's in yourself. So I spoke with Angela Felicia. She's the director of Healthy Life Resources at Northern Light Acadia Hospital. And she says burnout can really affect anyone and it can happen from either an extended stressful event or a number of stressors happening all at once. So signs of burnout can include any change from normal behavior, for example, insomnia, if you're usually a good sleeper, or eating processed foods if you don't usually do so. They can also include irritability without a specific cause or body aches and pains. She says to address burnout, it's really important to just take a few minutes every day to do something for yourself, like walking, leaving your desk, or talking to a friend. And it really can be as simple as taking five minutes every hour to stretch. And Maine Health and Northern Light Health have each been working to support their employees with things like employee assistance and employee well-being programs. So again, kind of the main takeaway message is that it doesn't have to be something huge, just something small um, kind of consistently can really help. Yeah, and something to not let go. If yeah. you're feeling it, make sure you address it. Exactly. So.